To Dr. Richard Lumsden, former professor of biology at Tulane University and Medical School, and the former dean of the graduate school, evolution was science, whereas creation was merely religion. And he taught as much to his students. What I would try to get across is that science is science. Science deals with the real world, with real phenomena. Uh, we don't bring into such discussions inferences of supernatural. Dr. Lumsden, who studied at Tulane, Harvard, and Rice, couldn't believe it when the Louisiana State Legislature passed a law that if evolution were taught in the public school classroom, then equal time had to be made for creation science. My reaction to that was just total consternation. Who are these people telling us PhD level scientists, how to teach and what to teach uh, regarding science. So uh, I, I just thought the whole thing was, was, was just absolutely absurd. But it was not the energy of a supernatural nature. I was prompted at that point to give a lecture on the uh, origin of life, giving creation its due with as much mockery as I could summon. Truly, in the beginning was the word. But the word was hydrogen. After that class, one of his graduate students came up to him and said, Great lecture, Doc. Well, that got my attention. Flattery always did. And she said, but I have some questions. And indeed, she did. She had a, a legal pad, and I could see line after line after line after line. So they had an appointment, which ended up lasting longer than anticipated. The appointment also ended up changing Dr. Lumsden's life. Now, I'm not trying to challenge anything. I just want to get my science straight. That's fair enough. Okay. That's well, fair enough. Last month, you taught how mutations were genetic disasters. How, by natural selection, can they randomly produce new and better structures? That's a good question. Good question. I'll probably have to think more about it. Okay, well, aren't the odds of the random assembly of genes mathematically impossible? You've uh, had your share of mathematics. Let's see if we can't figure that out. Not only were we talking about a mathematical impossibility, we were talking about a physical and chemical impossibility, which gave me pause. Genes, that might be 10 to the 200th, 10 to the... Hmm. Those are pretty formidable odds, aren't they? Mm -hmm. But the fact remains is that we're here. And in reality, the only way we could have gotten here is through the evolutionary process. So the fact that we're here really proves evolution, doesn't it? Hmm. And these are the events, molecular events, genetic events, that were mechanisms part and parcel of the evolutionary process. I could buffalo a student when I felt myself get a little bit in trouble, okay? I'd had a few years experience at this, okay? It's a trade secret. But for the first time maybe in my life in explaining various facets of evolution theory, I began to listen to what I was saying. And what I was saying wasn't making very good scientific sense. Where exactly in the fossil record is the evidence for progressive evolution, the transitional forms between the major groups? You know, most of them, come to think of it, are fully formed kinds in their own right. This conversation with the young lady went on for approximately three hours, during which time, again, we, we entertain these questions, and the whole time I'm answering, I'm listening to my own responses and trying not to betray this to the student. I was rapidly concluding that this is not making good scientific sense. What I'm telling this young lady and what I told the students this morning is not good science. And so far, I guess we just haven't been lucky enough to uh, pick up the uh, critical evidence. It dawned on me right then and there that evolution was, was bankrupt as a scientific theory. Well, if that were so, if, if, if life did not originate by a naturalistic, materialistic, spontaneous process, what was the alternative explanation? Oh my God. And I said it then, 
not in blasphemy, but in all. What happened that afternoon was, first of all, a, a, a mortal embarrassment to me as a professor. Professing to be wise, the professor was made a fool. And then secondly, with the realization that, hey, God exists, and God created, was that experience of fear. Now, that's enough to turn a corner in anyone's life. After much study and soul searching, Dr. Lumsden became a creationist first, and then a Christian. One event uh, led to the other, and uh, the culmination was finding myself before saving altar on my knees, that stiff neck broken, in obedience, asking Jesus to come into my life to be my Lord and personal Savior. Today, Dr. Richard Lumsden, former evolutionary professor, is a committed creationist because of the scientific evidence. He has since openly debated evolutionists. He feels that in light of the great advances of science in the 20th century, evolution is no longer tenable. The evidence of science, the best in paleontology, the best in biochemistry, the best in genetics, and so on, is all compelling for creation. Creation theory does not rest on some purely metaphysical principles. It rests on the same science that evolution theory would rest on except that the better explanation is creation, not naturalistic, materialistic, stochastic, or random evolutionary process.